Hi there, my name is Param Singh and in this video, I'm going to quickly share the top 50 questions and answers for the most common accessibility interview questions. If you have an interview coming up soon and don't have time to prepare, make sure to watch this video because I'm going to help you ace that interview. Now, if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe because I'm on a mission to build an inclusive digital world. And don't forget to like this video. It keeps me motivated to bring more great content to you. In our previous video, we covered the basics, but today we are going deep. 50 insane, tricky questions about VCAG, ARIA and screen readers that will test your skills. I'll give you fast, easy to remember answers, so pay attention. Comment how many you got right and share this with your team. Let's start at the foundation, HTML semantics. Because no matter how many ARIA attributes you have used, if the structure is not right, accessibility falls apart. Think of semantics as the grammar for your website. If your HTML sentences don't make sense, screen readers won't either. Let's begin. Keep track of how many answers you got right and drop your score in the comments. What's the difference between section, article, and div? And when should you use each? Section groups related content. Article stand on its own and div is just a plain container. To simplify it, think of a section as a chapter, article a story, and div an empty box. Choose the right one to structure your content meaningfully. How skipping the heading hierarchy affects the accessibility tree and screen reader navigation. Remember, screen readers use headings like table of contents to easily jump from one heading to another. And you might be surprised that skipping headings like going from H1 to H3 is not a VCAG violation, but it breaks user experience. Comment if you knew about this. Why should you avoid using multiple main elements on a single page? Main tag is meant to identify the primary purpose of the page. Having multiple tags confuses screen readers and break the landmark navigation. So stick to having only one main tag per page. How do screen readers interpret nested lists or description lists? They announce the structure hierarchy. Nested lists must be logical, otherwise you will lose the meaning of that content. What's the difference between native HTML controls and ARIA widgets in terms of keyboard and focus behavior? Native controls comes with keyboard support and semantics by default. On the other hand, ARIA widgets need extra coding to mimic it and increases the probability of breaking accessibility. Similar to the previous one, why a button tag is preferred over a div with the role button? Again, Native buttons have focus, keyboard, and form behavior built in. ARIA can't magically fix a div with roll button. You need to explicitly add tab index for focus order and on click even handlers to trigger the functionality. Will a screen reader announce a button with CSS set to visibility hidden? No, a screen reader won't announce it. The element is not visible on screen and is removed from the accessibility tree. So, a screen reader like NVDA will not read it. How do you handle complex tables with rows and column headers? You make use of scope, column group, and row span attributes to make complex tables read out correctly. These attributes define relationships between headers and cells. And only then, screen readers can correctly announce the row and column context. What are the consequences of omitting a title tag or using duplicates? Title is the very first thing that a screen reader hears. It guides them, especially when they have multiple tabs open. Missing or duplicate titles confuse and disorient them. Here's the bonus question. Why should you keep the title and main heading text same? Put your answers in the comment section. Now that we have covered HTML semantics, Let's dive into VCAG 2.2 success criteria. Because knowing only about HTML is not enough, you need to test against the standards. What's the difference between level A, AA, and AAA? Level A is the basic accessibility. 
the bare minimum required for a site to be usable. For example, adding alt text to images so a screen reader can describe them. Level AA is the ideal standard. It removes most major barriers for users and is what most of the successful organizations follow. For example, making sure text has enough color contrast and videos have captions. Level AAA is the exceptional accessibility. It's the gold standard. Aspirational but not always practical for all organizations. For example, it's providing sign language interpretations for your videos. Explain success criteria 135, identify input purpose. It helps users quickly fill the form utilizing the autocomplete functionality. You just need to use the correct autocomplete attribute value. Comment autocomplete to get access to the documentation listing all supported autocomplete attribute values. What's the minimum touch target size as per VCAC 2.2? The newly introduced success criteria 258 touch target minimum ensures that the clickable area is at least at 24 by 24 pixels. Now there are certain exceptions that I have covered in this video. Link is in the bio. How success criteria 247 focus visible is different from success criteria 2411 focus not obscure. Focus visible ensures you can see an enhanced focus and the other ensures focus is not hidden under sticky components, but both improve keyboard navigation. What's the purpose of success criteria 337 redundant entry? It stops repeated input on multi-step forms. So if you have already provided address as part of the form, you're not required to enter it again. You simply have a checkbox to say, yes, this is the use the same address as before resulting in less frustration and fewer errors. Explain success criteria 241 character key shortcuts. Make it a practice to always club at least two keyboard keys in case you're planning to use shortcut keys to trigger a functionality. Which VCA criteria relates to screen reader announcements of dynamic content? It's success criteria 412, name, role, value, and aria live regions. What success criteria 1410 reflow means? It checks for the layout for zoom and reflow. Always aim to prevent horizontal scrolling when at 400% or 320 pixels width size. What's the relationship between success criteria 412 to ARIA roles? It ensures programmatic names, roles, and values match the expectations of assistive technologies. What success criteria 1413 content on hover or focus? This is required to ensure that the content is persistent and is not dismissible by its own unless the action is performed by the end user. A powerful tool which either builds accessibility or silently breaks your accessibility. Explain the difference between ARIA label ARIA labeled by and ARIA described by. ARIA label and labeled by are used to provide accessible names, while ARIA described by is used to provide additional context. For more information, watch the full video covering the differences in detail. What does ARIA hidden true actually do? It removes the element and its children from the accessibility tree. Even if visible, screen reader will ignore it. Overusing ARIA hidden is one of the major problems of failing accessibility. I created a full video on this topic. Comment ARIA hidden to get early access. How does ARIA Live differs between polite and assertive values? And when should each be used? Polite, wait until the user is idle. Assertive, interrupts immediately. Use wisely, it can annoy or guide your users. Why is it risky to use role presentation or role none on interactive elements? It erases semantics, breaking keyboard behavior and focus. Again, practice caution. What are landmark roles and how they help screen reader users? They act like navigation anchors. Main, banner, nav, complementary. They all allow for quick jumps throughout the page. 
We are already halfway through. We cover 25 accessibility tough questions. If you are getting a value add, smash that like button. Comment which question you want me to break down further. And don't forget to share this video with your friend who is also trying for an accessibility interview. Let's continue with the remaining of the 25 accessibility questions. What's the difference between ARIA controls and ARIA owns? Comment if you want me to do a full video on this topic. What's the purpose of ARIA Atomic? It determines whether screen readers announce the entire section or just the changes. It's crucial for dynamic updates. For example, when set to true, it announces the entire dev instead of only announcing the changes happening in the dev. So in this case, it will announce India 110 for 3 after 13 overs. If a button has ARIA label and ARIA labeled by, what will NVDA announce? Try it out and comment your answers. What are the differences between ARIA checked, ARIA selected and ARIA pressed? Checked is used for checkboxes. Selected is used for tabs and options and pressed is used for toggle buttons. Can ARIA hidden be used to visually hide elements? The short answer is no. Visual hiding is not actually removing from the accessibility tree. Always pair with display none or visibility hidden if needed. Now that ARIA basics are clear, let's talk about testing tools and practical approaches because reading criteria is not enough if you can't verify them. How would you identify violations that automated tools miss? You use manual keyboard testing along with screen readers and real user scenarios. Remember, automation can catch up to 30 to 40 percent depending upon the complexity of a page. What are the limitations of automated plugins? They're great for finding basic issues. They miss complex ARIA attribute calculations, live region announcements and keyboard traps. Comment which automated plugin do you use? How do you test for keyboard focus order? One way is to tap through the entire page, check for focus visibility and ensure its logical sequence. And second is to make use of Andy. To understand how Andy can be used for the focus order, watch this full video. Explain the difference between browse mode and focus mode. Browse mode is the default mode for any screen reader. The moment you turn on NVDA or JAWS, it's in the browse mode. It reads every single element on the page. If you press H, it goes to the next heading. If you press U, it goes to the next unvisited link. So it's in the reading mode. On the other hand, focus mode or form mode is when you are in the controls, the form elements. At that moment, if you press H, it will not take you to the next heading. It will simply write the letter H. How do you enable accessibility tree in dev tools? And this is your challenge of the week. Find it out and comment. How do you test for ARIA live regions? Turn on a screen reader, trigger the dynamic updates and listen to the announcements. Ensure that it matches the visible text or its intent. How do you detect a keyboard trap? Try tabbing out. If you are stuck, it's a violation of success criteria 212. How can you validate accessible names without turning on a screen reader? And this is where you make use of ND plugin. You check for ND output to understand the accessible names of different elements. How do you verify focus after model closes? Focus should return to the element that opened the model. Miss this and you break focus management. How do you test forms with custom components? You check for programmatic labels check for tabbing order and any ARIA validations. Finally, we reach the deep end and testing for screen readers and virtual PC cursors. This is where accessibility testing gets really advanced. What is virtual PC cursor in JAWS? A virtual PC cursor in JAWS is like an invisible mouse pointer that lets you move around a web page using just your keyboard. When you open up a web page, JAWS creates a virtual copy of the page that lets you read the text line by line or word by word, jump through headings, links and buttons and navigate just like you would with a real mouse. Press insert plus Z to toggle it on or off. 
How is NVDA's browse mode different from JAWS? They both have similar concept, but handling of live regions and interactive elements differs slightly. Why do some ARIA widgets fail in virtual PC cursor mode? It usually happens when you misuse ARIA roles or have missing attributes. So always ensure that you're testing for both modes, virtual PC cursor on and off. What happens when ARIA hidden is applied to focusable elements? When ARIA hidden is set true to focusable element, it is invisible to screen reader users. How role alert is different from ARIA live assertive? Watch this video to explore the differences with live examples. How do you handle parity across NVDA, JAWS and voiceover? You test with all. Verify ARIA labels, roles and live regions and document the differences. How do you simulate real world user flows? Like you test for headings, landmarks, links and forms sequentially. Don't rely on random testing. What does your testing routine look like? Watch my effective testing routine video to find more bugs as compared to average testers. Which shortcut key is used to see all headings, lists and links at the same time? Comment your answers below. How do you keep yourself upskilled with all the changes happening in the accessibility space? Tell them that you watch my videos. And that's it. 50 of the most challenging questions for web accessibility testers with short answers to prepare you for interviews. Remember, accessibility is not about passing automated checks. It's about empathy, understanding your users, and mastering ARIA, VCAG, and screen reader behavior. If you found this helpful, hit like, subscribe, and share it with someone prepping for accessibility interviews. This is Param Singh, signing off.